Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and savages, welcome to yet another episode of Savages Unscripted. My name is Hector, I am the stallion in the studio, and I'm here with my co-host. What up? It's Papi Chulo again. Dude, you missed another day last week. Hey man, I was really messed up. (laughs) I feel like you're always sick. No, no, I was not messed up. Sick wise, I was messed up because my birthday oh. was two days ago and I had a party the ah. day before. <laughs> That's funny because you told me you weren't feeling well, you were sick, and then I and then I saw your Instagram and then I saw you were drinking. I was like, ah, hey, no. interesting. Hold up, I told you my throat was messed up, but I didn't say why. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but um, no, I'm I'm glad uh, Papa Bear was able to take over, even though he was just talking a little shit. Uh, my number one fan still helped helped us out, you know, the intern. Hey, I, I think true critics <laughs> are our best fans sometimes, you know, because they're they're trying to help you get better, you know. Honestly, after I heard, nah, man, like when he started complaining, I just I just stopped listening. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> he does a lot. He does a lot for the podcast. Know, we have a good intern. Nah, we, I appreciate him. He's a really cool dude. Met him. Met him for the first time, accidentally in a way. Yeah, and he got you mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> Did he? I don't even remember. I I, I remember your, we came back from a party, or not even a party. It was just a reunion we had with another friend, and. We just went back to your place, and he was—he just happened to get there in time, and he—we were able to meet for the first time. Well, no, I mean, on well, I, I guess someone didn't listen to the podcast last week. In the podcast, he got you mixed up with somebody else. Oh, I don't remember that part. Yeah. <laughs> ah, interesting. You don't listen to our. Who listens to this podcast, Al? If you don't listen to it, who listens to this? My mom doesn't listen to this. Oh. Nah, man, I did listen to it. She doesn't want I to. think I just zoned out because I I was probably putting as background noise. Yeah. So that so <laughs> your birthday <laughs> your birthday just passed, and so did the holidays. How how were your holidays? It's funny you bring those two up because it's kind of mixed for me, since at least gift wise, because I get gifts for my birthday, but they always give it to me on Christmas. So it's like, oh, happy birthday slash here's your Christmas present, and I I remember. Though I was, I would previously get salty, but generally for this time, just going back to the topic, um, they're pretty well. They've been kind of lately uninteresting, you know, because you get older. At least for me, I I lost interest of it, probably because you don't get gifts anymore. <laughs> but it's like a whatever thing for me, honestly. Like it's cool to see lights and people having fun, but um, it was it was whatever. No, I agree, and I think it's harder to really enjoy the holidays as because I notice like it's going by faster now. Like we realize, boom, out of nowhere, it's like November thirty first, and the holidays are upon us. You know, you start seeing Christmas lights and stuff, and you want to enjoy it every year. I tell myself, hey, I'm going to watch more Christmas movies, and then I watch like one tops, mm-hmm. and like I don't do those holiday things. I always say I'm going to do, but then it's just I'm so busy with work and I'm so busy with other shit that. I don't have time to get into that. And then by the time I realize I have time, like that day before Christmas. <laughs> it's honestly, I feel like if you just uh, get around with some close people, have a couple of drinks and not even expect gifts or anything, just talk and just re- chill and relax. It, it's it, that's probably the best for me. Not a going wild and partying and getting really messed up. That for me, it seems like a, a better uh, scenery for Christmas. Just, relaxing with your close ones yeah and speaking of drinks i've um i realized my tolerance has gone so low i think i'm just getting so old (laughs) do you think it's that or just your taste you know that and i I don't drink as much as i used to like you remember when we were living together like (laughs) alcohol was my water oh my god but um like since then i just i don't know the first half of 2019 i probably had like two or three drinks tops that's probably a bit much, actually. I probably had like one, or, yeah, one or two. But like a few days ago, I had like two or three drinks in one day, and I was feeling it immediately. And I was like, "Whoa!" Mm-hmm. Like, past Hector would be disappointed and confused. <laughs> what was the one thing that got you like that? What what drink was it? Uh, I had a glass of whiskey. That's probably what it Ooh, is. That's a good. Way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, never again. I kind of similar to you. I feel like we're just old people, but um, I had this year. I haven't drank as much as previous years. Um, probably the first half, um, I drink like maybe five beers the whole year, and then just recently I've just been drinking because of um, reunions and my birthday and all this stuff. But after just two two tops three days of just drinking like a you when you were in the kickback i'm done like uh, i just i'm not looking forward to the next drink anymore <laughs> one thing i have had a lot of i had to start cutting back was tamales Ooh. i had way too much in the span of one week uh we had family over and they had my grandma had made way too much tamales so they gave them to us we had a probably a good 15 to 20 and then we helped them make more we made a good 70 to 80 and then I got some from my other side of my family. So I had the ones they had given us in the beginning, the ones we made, and then the ones from the other side of the family. And I had like – I could meal prep the malas for three weeks. And it got to the point where my body's just not used to that stuff anymore. And like after one one or two tamales, like I'd feel like I had a Thanksgiving feast. Like it just was not going well for me. And imagine all those calories and fat <laughs> on each tamale. Yeah. Like, I, w- I would eat one and I'd be like, I need to go to the gym, but my body feels so weird. I I feel like if I go to the gym, I'm going to throw up. But that's the holidays, tamales. You know? Yeah. You know what? what's for me, like, the same type of food of tamales is for me, at least? What? It's panetón. I don't know if you've ever had that before. What is that? No. So, it's like a, it's a holiday bread, I think it is. It's like a big muffin. Except obviously without the toppings mm-hmm. glaze, but it inside it has um those um those factory made like uh, fruit uh, bites, you know the the ones that you could just what do you call it? They're like they're like the chewy gums, you know, like the bit uh, the the bears, little chewy bears. Mm-hmm. But it's I uh, it's that shape, so and, and it's that big, but they're fruit instead, and you just bite into them, you just gain like a a cool 700 calories (laughs) because just um out of just getting one seventh of that big muffin um it's uh, around 700 calories and then if you and people at least from peru i've seen this meme a lot but people put butter on top of that so that's that thing just shoots up especially with the fat through the roof and that's one of the things that is kind of like a fat plague for at least my household because my stepdad and then other family members just love panetone and it's so good yet so bad for you it's it, it gets to a point that you just have panetone at times for breakfast until the grocery store runs out of it <laughs> oh man savage and scripted coming at you with food ladies and gentlemen if you are hungry go and get some food treat yourself try some vegan food why not yeah. Oh, and you and me were discussing. Oh, actually, I had vegan food. Um, I had a vegan lasagna years ago. One of the best lasagnas I had in my life. Like, I don't care for pasta. Mm-hmm. And I was invited over by some uh, vegan friends. And they made this lasagna. And it was delicious. Like, I wanted seconds and thirds. And usually if I'm invited to, like, a dinner party or something, I, I try not to eat that much. But I wanted more. I was like, damn, this is really good. <laughs> And um, about two months ago, I went out with a friend of mine and she was vegan or pre- she was vegetarian. I think she was vegan at some point, but we went to this vegan place and Plant Power in Redlands is pretty good. One of the best chicken sandwiches I've had in my life, which is weird saying because it isn't actually chicken. So that was really interesting. Typically, since the, you don't get to eat meat for, you know, vegan recipes... I feel like they really make up for it with flavor. Like, they're once you get a bite to any type of vegan food, it always tastes so much better and at least lighter as well, obviously. But the the just the flavor that they emphasize on it's so good because um I also you remember you need uh, creativity too. Yeah, and I remember I tried uh, I think it was um some goat substitute, which is like a vegan type of meat. And uh-huh. it didn't taste anything different. Like the only difference was that it felt lighter when you ate it, and you and then you, you had your you went to the bathroom, but it tasted the same. And I was magnified. I was like, maybe you know you could switch to vegan, and it might not be that bad. <laughs> but uh, obviously, 
being a vegan could get a little expensive, if you know what I'm saying. And your options are pretty limited oh, when you go out. But you got to give it to yeah, the vegans, You just got to really know what you need. You, gotta, you just got to really know what your body needs and how you can get that and how you can get creative about getting that. Like, I've seen those, um, uh, like, cauliflower, like, in the form of buffalo wings, I've seen those and I've seen a lot of my friends eating that. Friends that are um, vegan or vegetarian and they seem interesting. Those are the things that I'm going to actively make myself. I think like if someone helps, lets me try it, I'll definitely do it. And if I really enjoy it, I'll be like, you know what? Maybe I'll implement this into my diet. At the end, I feel like just the flavor on its own makes up for all the all the proteins you miss out on. But that that... I yeah I could see myself also implementing it as long as it's you know not too strict when it comes to the recipes or where you get it from because I know it, it could get that strict. But uh, I recently have one been... thing I will s- yeah go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say one thing I have noticed is I think now it seems like a better time to be, be vegetarian or vegan because it seems like there's a lot more options out there. Um, we're seeing dip like more creative foods and more like just different food places and more of these vegan options and stuff and i specifically remember um when we went to cal state san Bernardino, like when i lived on campus and i went to go eat i'd be like this is the one vegetarian option like that looks kind of sad like there would there'd be all these options and the one vegetarian option (laughs) but like now it seems like you see more of these things there's more options there's more things to choose from and there's a lot more creativity in that so it seems like right now is a better time, I think, if you're a vegetarian or vegan. I was actually going to add that it, it is getting easier. But another thing that's coming out is that you remember the last episode we recorded, we were talking about kind of like social media clout. Yeah. So that's what I have seen also people doing social media for vegan clout. Like they're like, oh, I'm going to turn vegan now. And it could be so challenging at times. People just last like maybe a week, two weeks, maybe a month or two, and then they're done. <laughs> and it's pretty funny that um, you need to um, – people like to announce it a lot even though it, they don't know what's coming ahead, you know, because um, it it's uh, there's more options out there, but it could still be a challenging transition from being um meat-loving type of person to going to healthier option where you – your your body's gonna have different changes and different um outcomes to it, but also you're gonna have to kind of control yourself when it comes to eating because I don't, I'm not assuming vegans go on a buffet all the time and start eating this stuff or, you know, put um different types of ingredients. Uh, we um, meat eaters loves that vegans don't ha- don't use anymore. Yeah, and it's the control that's the tough part. I had a friend a few years ago who was doing the keto diet. The keto diet's one that I've heard of, and I just I don't know. It's very iffy. I wouldn't want to do a keto diet. You're just completely cutting carbs. Um, by the name, that's like what it is by definition. You're cutting carbs, which you, your body needs carbs. And um, uh, so I, this guy was losing weight pretty fast. So it was being infect- effective in terms of what it was supposed to do. And I remember one day, um, and one thing I've heard about the keto diet is once you start eating carbs again and you suddenly implement to your diet, like you're going to gain weight pretty fast. If you've been deprived of these carbs for a while, now you're suddenly it, – it's in your diet again. And I remember we went to uh, the 626 Market Night. I don't know if you've ever been to us to those market nights. Downtown LA? But um, no, this is in uh, not downtown LA. I don't know where it is. <laughs> it's not downtown, but though. But uh, So it's, it's this Asian food market. Uh-huh. And so this friend of ours went and we told him, like, hey, it's usually all cash. So bring some cash and this place is pretty pricey. So all of us brought like $30, $40. Around that price range, and this guy comes and he. This is his first time, and he brings like three hundred dollars in cash. <laughs> so <laughs> he brings three hundred dollars in his wallet, and he doesn't know what to expect. And he's on this keto diet, and he told us like, you know what? I'm gonna. It's gonna be my cheat day. I'm gonna eat a little bit of carbs today. And as soon as he got there, I was eating a ramen burger, which is oh basically, my God. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not healthy. You it's just, very greasy, uh... but it's well. It's, it's one of my favorite burgers, and he saw me eating it. And it's ramen, so this is a shit ton of carbs. <laughs> and I think he wasn't eating meat at the time either. And he sees me with his ramen burger, which, you know, it smells really good and it's really greasy and it's in my hand and I'm burning my fingers and I'm enjoying every bite, super watery and all that stuff. Um, really moist meat, but uh, he decides to buy one. 
and he buys two at the same time. So he has two ramen burgers and he puts those two down, gets a third one. And he just, I think he blew like half of his money in that night. And I'm pretty sure he gained like always worth of weight in one night. But you need control when you do any sort of dieting. And actually that reminds me too. Um, you remember when I barely first met you guys and I was doing um, uh, that diet that was uh, pressure points and all that stuff to control your hunger? Totally. That you guys kept, kept making fun of me? You were always doing something. So, I make fun of you no matter what. <laughs> um, thank you. I, I, like, I like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's because I care for you. I, I realized more and more it kind of was keto diet before keto diet was a thing. Because at least from, from the small stuff that I heard of keto diet, isn't it just mainly just protein, a protein diet, where you just eat protein, no carbs, You're, and vegetables at most? Yeah, you're basically just cutting carbs, as far as I know. So that's what I was doing. <laughs> I would just, what at least when it came to my diet, you would have to eat four to five times a day. You would have to eat just any protein as soon as possible, and your metabolism would run wild, but uh, you would be able to lose weight because the protein is so much easier to cut down on your system that you'll basically be constantly shitting and you'll be losing weight quicker and not way quicker in a way but at least in the if you were to be weighted at the moment you'll be lighter and um, mm-hmm. that's crazy to me that that thing just popped out of nowhere because i remember when i when i used to do that a lot the lady made it seem like it was a you know it was a, a small thing nobody knew about and at first i was like being optimistic this doesn't work and at the end it wasn't because the pressure points were working, but it was because of the, the actual diet. And it's crazy to me how how much these small trends could just pick up out of nowhere. And even being witness to that before it became a thing. But uh, yeah, that's my little story. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and you and I were talking about earlier a little bit of a change of conversation. Yeah. And this is something that Elias and I, Elias, our intern, uh, in the last episode, we're talking about the magic of Christmas. How when you're younger, uh, when you're child you know there's this magic to it and the idea of santa claus and presents and this like incredible impatience for christmas but as you get older like it just kind of fades away but when do you think that started for you that fading away of that sensation i think that was when i was 16 17 like the teen years i would say for me the one thing that stuck out was that um you just it's kind of like the same thing over and over again and uh, you receive gifts, material stuff, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Like you, you'll probably use it for a week or so, and then it's uh, it's about it. Like at least for the gifts I would get when I was younger, and um, it wasn't such a big hype. The only thing I really liked about Christmas, and I still do, is that people really get to be happy during that time, enjoy, be with their families. I get to hang out with families I haven't seen in a while, but. That mostly was it. Before I remember when I was little, I would really get excited for it. But I think it was just because of gifts. But yeah, I think around the high school years, I, I kind of got started getting bored of it. The holidays when people are kind at home and violent in stores. Oh my god. That's basically what it is. <laughs> Did you ever... I, didn't, I didn't see any re- recordings of any fights this year, though. I was, I'm pretty disappointed. Yeah, I didn't hear much news about people getting trampled over on Black Friday or any sort of uh, big um, event, big uh, sale events. I was kind of, mm. not disappointing, but a shock. <laughs> people are on Amazon now. People are doing the Cyber Monday. Dude, oh my god. At Amazon, I'm telling you, man, Amazon's going to take over. I think when I realized, when I not gotten older but more so matured in the sense of christmas was when i got excited to got to get socks like i would get some socks and I'd be like all right <laughs> this is what i needed <laughs> um yeah i'm always excited to get a starbucks gift card too coffee's really good coffees would get hector going how about you what was around the age that you started realizing you don't enjoy christmas as much we stopped getting really um I don't know the best way to put it, but magical about it at a young age. Because I told you, I've always just moved a lot. So at a young age, like during the holidays, we will be moving. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it was like at a young age, I didn't, I stopped caring about the Santa Claus and opening gifts and stuff. For me, it's just, I saw my family like once a year. Uh-huh. My grandma usually sleeps over just during that time. So for me, it was just, I get, got to spend time with my family. And that's when we watch like corny ass movies together uh-huh. you know and drink hot chocolate and shit like that yeah so uh, over a while I, I realized for me it was about family 
as cheesy as that sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then after a while, I was like, oh, damn, I actually like getting socks now. (laughs) So if you were to put a number, though, like around what time would it have been? Uh, Or at least high school years towards the end of middle school? Maybe middle school, pre-middle school, around there. 12, 13. Damn. What you end up getting this year, actually? I'm curious. Uh, My favorite gift I got was a book. It was this book called Walden by Henry David Thoreau. Um, It's one book that I actually read in college, like for a class that I actually wasn't bored by. And it's basically about um, basically putting aside materialism and being one with nature. And um, it's this writer that he basically went out for this walk in nature and he's just putting aside like civilization and uh, materialism and stuff and so i've wanted to reread this for a while and like i want to now i have it so now i got it for christmas but i want to read it and i just want to walk out and take a hike like by myself i just want to go out and just read like under a tree take a hammock with me make some friends with some squirrels or something some iced tea on you as well i'm gonna find bigfoot or he's gonna find me that's what it's gonna be (laughs) i mean a couple of months ago you were almost bigfoot (laughs) Uh, Wait, what the you. hell does <laughs> that mean? Just messing with you. But uh, that's cool. That sounds like a you actually got it from a person that really gets knows you, and they probably remember that you mentioned that before. Yeah, and like somebody that gave me a gift this year told me that I'm like the easiest to shop for. Like all I want is books and coffee. <laughs> that's like <laughs> all I guess. Basically, yes, that's who I am. I have a stack of books I don't read, and I have like cartons or tins of uh, coffee. I still I've still yet to drink. I, I realized I've accumulated Starbucks gift cards over the year, like the past two years. I probably have like $150 in Starbucks gift cards and I don't use them. Ooh. I just put them aside. And I, whenever I go to Starbucks, I pay out of my own damn money and I forget I have a fucking gift card. <laughs> so I have all this accumulated credit I can use. So if anyone wants to go out for coffee with uh, one half of Savages Unscripted, I, I can fund it. <laughs> we can do that. That's cool. but It was a good holiday. What about, what did I get? I don't even remember I got anything. Oh, uh, my cousin gave me um, a Gucci perfume. I was kind of surprised I got a, actually Gucci. got a perfume. I mean, gift. Damn. Yeah, I was like, oh, You seem like damn. you'd be into Gucci stuff. Nah, man. What you mean? I'm not riding around with my sh- Gucci shirt, my Adidas or Gucci, Gucci underwear. sweats. And my Gucci socks and all this. I'm not trying to flex. Your, your, your Supreme Bandits. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> Supreme Bandits. <laughs> oh, dude. Didn't you, didn't you mention one time that one of your students was actually using yeah. those? Oh my he God. had a Supreme Bandit, but he wasn't using it. And, like, what came to my mind was, you know, Supreme's pricey when you have their name on stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, would he actually use that as a band-aid for its primary use or is it just him carrying it around and showing off? You know, is he going to use it as a sticker? But yeah, Supreme's ridiculous. And now that we're talking about kids and Supreme, um, I'm going to ask you, Hector, are you going to start playing Fortnite now? I played once and I don't think I'm <laughs> ever playing again. I'm saying this now because I. it seems that they're now implementing Star Wars, just the um, character character I don't, bodies to I don't care. a fortnight no it's not that they, it's not that you don't care I'm, I'm just curious that like you mentioned a couple of episodes ago that star wars is not not no you said harry potter but also star wars is kind of a classic now and kids and anybody from any sort of year could really could really find this interesting and it seems that star wars is doing the same and it's showing that with fortnite it's just funny how it's all going down because i saw that and i was like I just imagine the type of people who view that and the people who actually love it. And I know those people don't never play Fortnite, but it just shows how versatile or how, how, how indulged in society Star Wars really is. At, at least as a nostalgia. I will say props to Fortnite, though, because you know, I'm not for that. It's not my thing, but they seem to adapt to whatever's going on in pop culture because I know and I'm not sure if it was infinity war or endgame when they brought thanos yep. into fortnite they had that little game type and i know at some point they brought batman i believe when borderlands 3 came out they brought in some borderland skins and some like different maps in the style of borderlands and if what you say is true about star wars you know because the mandalorian which just finished um this past friday and the new star wars movie that just came out so that's what's in right now so it seems like they seem to adapt to things but 
I, for me, it's not about the skins and what Fortnite looks like. It's just what it is. Mm-hmm. And just it's game type. That's not what I'm into. So I don't care if they put me in Fortnite. I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just to add a little business perspective, I feel like Fortnite is basically becoming a good marketing tool for other businesses or brands like this because they're basically exposing this to younger kids and if they connect these two together and and they deliver right this will be able able to increase their audience for that specific uh, brand or company and that's really that's a really cool innovative idea and i understand i haven't at least seen recently this type of thing where an entertainment um or a video game, should I say, it gets connected to ad- kind of like advertising indirectly for other companies and through gameplay. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. Actually, thanks for thanks for bringing this up because I wasn't thinking of Fortnite, but something I was thinking of made me think of it. So the decade's finishing, you know, not just 2019. In a few days, 2019 will just... It's not just 2019 that's finishing, but also this decade from 2010 to 2020. Um and if you look back in retrospect, like just so much has happened in social media and technology and government and pop culture. And that's one thing I was thinking of too, like Fortnite wasn't a whole part of the decade, but it was incredibly popular. And I think it was a name that everybody knew. People did those dances and people knew what Fortnite was. It was a big name. So brands like that, like there's some things I think that really highlight the decade, even if you weren't into it. Like, you know, you and me aren't big fans of Fortnite, but it was popular and it was successful. Um, another big one is the MCU. This past decade, they were incredibly popular. All the Avengers movies that you did in this whole cinematic universe, that's incredible if you really think back on these past 10 years alone. Uh, to you, like, what are some highlights of the past decade? Mm, interesting question. One thing that comes off the bat, is and we've talked about this before is uh Disney because before at least you wouldn't really think of watch going to watch their movies and being entertained by it because you thought it was just for little kids but with the resurgence they did with the uh, Marvel and how much of a big uproar they did with that this whole series coming uh to the end this year um it's it's been a really entertaining way of seeing their progress and see how much they could grow such a unknown brand in a way you know it was just people who were really into it but now it seems like anybody could really get into uh, watching the avengers and that seemed to me one of the highlights at least business-wise of how to grow a brand and how to get more of a another demographic to be entertained to your to your um to your products or your your world in a way that they that this event has so that, that's one of the highlights i liked then the other highlights I'll yeah, say. So, oh, sorry. Uh huh. I'm just mentioning one. No, more. I wasn't saying I did. I, I did a I did a quick research because you mentioned Marvel and you know what Disney did. So they bought Disney bought Marvel at the very end of 2009. So right at the end of yeah. that decade, and they bought Marvel for four billion dollars. And you just think about what they did with Marvel, and they made a lot in return. <laughs> they bought it for four billion dollars. And Star, they bought Star Wars in 2012, which was in the past decade. So, like, yeah, like you said, like, that's just crazy what they did in terms of that. But go on. I cut you off. That's okay. Um, then the other thing I was going to – just to give you more time, too, to speak up on it. Um, I was just going to say, even though it's pretty recent, how the transitions of presidents have been. Because, uh, you know, we had the Obama years. And then now uh, we have the Trump years. And uh, it's it's kind of like a roller coaster. You know, it's up. And then it just keeps diving down. And it's just – clicking back up 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 and let's see how far we could go before it goes all <laughs> goes all down because uh at least for yeah. the obama years it's not he's he did great shit and i don't really know much about it i know he really did good a lot of good stuff for at least the general population and the policies and all that jazz but at least um how do you say it uh, image wise that uh, uh their presentation Obama kind of made made the image of a president be kind of chill, cool, and be kind of Classy. willing to talk up about any sort of government topics without it being so boring. It, it he really made it seem entertaining, and, and at least with also with his basketball skits, with his funny jokes and all this stuff, it made it seem like 
people will be willing to people were actually watching Obama's skits and they were having fun with this and it at least brought some sort of attention for at least the younger audience to focus on this and then you bring Trump into this and he blew it out of proportion <laughs> he just says whatever the fuck he wants he doesn't care he uses his power to um to his favors to use for his favors and it's become relevant but at the same time for the wrong reasons and that that's one of the highlights I also got to say for at least this decade. I mean, I wasn't trying to get controversial and political today. <laughs> I, I, opinions <laughs> aside, I was just going to say that We're in, script, um, man. in terms of politics in between these uh, different uh, presidencies, the one thing I did learn in this past decade is just how so this democratic process should and shouldn't be. One thing I do like is, though, is when Trump was running in that you know, year or two during all that stuff. Um, I, that's when I got into politics. And the reason I got into it is because I started realizing like, this is important. This stuff affects us. Even if I'm just one vote, like it's important for me to vote and for me to talk about this stuff or for me to educate myself and other people about this stuff. And that's why I got more into just a lot of what I do and how I write my stuff. But I realized just what politics shouldn't be <laughs> that I want to see and I want to hear about policies I don't want to hear people slandering and I don't want to hear people attacking each other. That's not what I'm here for. I want to know how is this person going to help me. I don't want to – I don't want you to tell me for 30 minutes why this person isn't great. I want to know why you're great, you know. That's just mm -hmm. what I learned in the, that last presidency, that last running for the presidency. So like I said, opinions aside, I'm just – I realize just the importance of, of politics and what I wanted of it. But yeah, that was a big part of it too. Um, so much happened in this last decade – Netflix and chill was a big part of pop culture for a good while. For now. <laughs> uh, I think there was a point where everybody just watched Netflix and that was the thing. And it got kind of sad. I think it got to the point where that was most people's hobby. <laughs> like <laughs> that's Yeah, that's actually uh, sounds you know, sad. <laughs> but but it, it was a big part of the culture. And Netflix brought something to the table too. The whole binging stuff, that started with Netflix. And you and me were talking about how Disney is starting – you know, with the Mandalorian dropping episodes every week and that's smart because it's keeping you waiting. But the binging thing wasn't a thing and it wasn't talked about until Netflix. I'm sure people did it before, but Netflix made it their thing. Without, you know, dropping these Netflix shows in one day, you could binge it and talk about it. And whether or not that's working now because of Disney Plus, at the time it worked because of Netflix. So that's big in this last decade too. What else, what else was one of them that stuck out to you? So much. Um, Your top ones. I am not uh, caught up with music now. I am I am uncultured with music nowadays, and I have no problem with that. It's just I'm an old soul with music. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Social media. Social media is a huge one. I can't believe we didn't say that first. 2010. I think 2010 or tw 2009 is when I got my Facebook. And a year or two before that, I had a MySpace. Just think of what has happened since then. Instagram. Facebook purchasing Instagram, Snapchat, um, Snapchat. Uh, TikTok is a thing now. Vine, Vine, yeah, all this stuff. <laughs> well, what, what, what are you? Vine what, what I'm saying in terms new, of like TikTok content, entertainment, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but still, like I'm saying, like it's a different iteration, though it's a different thing. But still, like all this happened in the past year, ten years, year, in the past decade, and that's huge. I don't use my Snapchat anymore. I recently just got into Twitter. But a lot of those, they're important in different ways, and they let people express themselves in different ways, and that's that's very cool. Man, I don't want to go more political. <laughs> I I was actually gonna mention one more thing. Do it. I'll save you if you say some dumb shit. No, 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 no. Don't worry. Not this time. But I was... <laughs> Not, this is the first time. <laughs> Took twenty one episodes. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say how um social activists have been really getting the spotlight recently and it is social media it actually connects to your previous point but so much more at least exposure to these type of activities either it being controversial good or bad it's been outstanding how how much um how many tools and how social media also could help grow and make aware of so many different type of actions such as black lives matter or feminism or just even growing trees i don't know if you heard of the recent campaign this year i think it just happened like three months ago but um <laughs> recently um the top youtubers 
PewDiePie, and then the guy who also who started was Mr. Beast. He's a YouTuber. He's a really cool dude, and he started. He did a collaboration with a small group called like. I don't know. I don't know. I can't get it the name off the top of my head, but they basically were just meant to grow trees around the world. And, you know, after all the topics we've been talking about, the Amazon's getting on fire and other forest fires going along, California always burning up. And also the oil spills that's been going on in Brazil, too, and probably around the world as well. It's been a great uh, fresh of air just hearing about this. What It went so viral that their goal was, I think, to get a million trees or something like that or and they end up getting like 20 million. I, I'm not, I'm super iffy on the how much, but basically they got shit on their trees. <laughs> and that just sounds That's great good. to hear for people. Just that shows one of the positive ways of using social media just to grow something really important as this. And it shows how, you know, any good cause could catch, could catch attention and could really bring people to connect together to, to a better, a better outcome or something that could help really impact the world in a positive way. That's that's another thing. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, there's always been, I think, these little, like, awareness stuff, like, on social media to help bring awareness to stuff. And people, you know, garnering attention and people, in turn, you know, donating to charities. But I think the one that got my attention, the one that was a game changer, was the ALS Bucket Challenge. The Ice Bucket Challenge. Because that was the one where they made it a trend to do these videos and they made it a trend to spread this the word. Mm-hmm. And we had discussed this. I don't think we published this episode, actually, but we were talking about the Ice Bucket Challenge, no. and we were saying, Nick, yeah, not everybody donated money, but you were spreading the word, and I think you were supposed to uh, initiate, like, five people and, or challenge them, so you're spreading it, and maybe, hopefully, one of those people are going to donate money, and that's what it is. You're spreading awareness. Not everyone's going to donate, but people are talking about it, and that does something. And I think the Ice Bucket Challenge was huge in the past 10 years as well. That was one where I was like, I actually did it. Uh, I was broke at the time and I didn't donate much, but I donated something. Uh-huh. And that's what it is, you know, spreading awareness and making some sort of an action. So I think that was a huge part of the past 10 years as well. Oh, my God. I just got to be thankful for those fail ALS I spoke at Challenge videos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. oh those were, there were some good ones. <laughs> my favorite was when they, they were supposed to throw the bucket from, I don't know, the top of a playground and the kids were in the bottom and the dad i think just dropped it and hit the kid in the face (laughs) but that leads to my other point also how big of a it it was relevant before and before 2010 but how big um kind of like free entertainment happened with at least youtube where people are legitimately at least people younger than us or even around our age are trying to make serious bank from making their own type of brands and channels to entertain people. And now there's so many more options and choices that it gives opportunity for creative people, at least like us even, that or in YouTube where they're willing to show their talents, see, show how they could entertain people. And they, it's constantly such a um, growing so much that people are like, why should I go to college? I could just make a YouTube channel type of thing. <laughs> and yeah, that's yeah, and I like that. People can be creative, and I don't really care about the popularity part, but be successful. They can make something out of it. Yeah. Like we said earlier, you can use those platforms for good. And I think for a while, I think there's been that fear of there not being creativity anymore. But I think with YouTube, that's harnessed again. People are being creative again, and there's a certain point where yeah, you can do anything on YouTube. But if you want to get known and successful, well, now you have to be different. Now you have to be creative, or What's different about you that people would want to be interested in? And that makes you think, like, I'm going to do this. That's already been done, but I'm going to do it differently. And that's a really big thing. And that leads to a great point because I know you said you uh, have some stuff to do soon. But this podcast, for those listening, about a year ago, Al and I had graduated college. I had graduated. I think you were about to graduate. Mm -hmm. And we will play Xbox and we would just talk for hours, us and some other friends. But we said – be interesting to make a podcast and i had just gotten into podcasts i think you were listening to like joe rogan and a few other ones mm-hmm. so you were down because you saw what it was and i was getting interested in it and we just kept talking about it and talking about it and i remember i got a mic for christmas and i think you got a mic as well and we had the mics for a while but we didn't do anything i think it took a few months we didn't touch it we just weren't doing anything we were lagging it and then we really started talking about the podcast and we started talking about well 
what would we want to do? What sort of community do we want? What kind of topics do we want to have? What kind of people do we want on the show? And then things got more organized and professional. And we started a little rough. I think we've grown a lot in these past episodes. Uh, this episode, as opposed to the first five, seemed very different. <laughs> that, that's the point of our podcast. We wanted this to become unscripted. We wanted this to grow with us. And right here... As we record on the 29th, this is our last episode of 2019, we're going to be recording and dropping our 21st episode. How do you feel about that, Al? Feels surprisingly great. <laughs> like your friend kind of pointed out the other day was, I don't know who, I forgot his name or her name, but didn't he or she mention that they were surprised that we were actually being consistent or at least kind of successful, even though we were so unorganized. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That yeah. I, I was, I was asked about how we plan stuff. We have a notebook and I was like, yeah, it's in here. I just pointed at my head. I was like, <laughs> 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 but we do it. We, it was our own way. It was our yes. way, own way. You and me are thinkers and we plan stuff out elaborately. We don't have it on paper all the time, but we know what we're doing and we know why we want to do it. And look, we come up with this podcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, you and me share this as a team. We had people collab with us. We have other ideas, but we're, you know, we're now we're getting better. <laughs> I think we're gonna, that's what it's taught me, though. Honestly, running, helping with this podcast and co-hosting this podcast, it's taught me to be organized and how to properly run something. And I'm grateful for that because I know I was super unorganized before. What, what do you think, uh, at least reflecting back, I know we talked about this a lot, but let's just do it for the last time what do you think you noticed was a huge difference at least on your side or just in general from our first episode to now it could be anything from just um editing to uh speaking in the mic to being more organized i you brought up organization but what else do you think i out? i think we just grew in the voice um i think over time we started realizing you know who our audience was and at first you you and me wanted to be funny we wanted to tell stories and i think i realized that i was listening to some older episodes and in the first couple ones there was a lot of storytelling a lot of you know me cursing <laughs> a lot of uh you saying some dumb shit but i think over time we changed and we started realizing like uh most of our audience like these are some educated people these are some people that are actually smart people and they want to hear some more elaborate stuff and that's why eventually i think we started talking to, like discussing controversial topics and we started discussing more elaborate stuff there's the humor there but we started realizing like hey you know what like there's other things pe these people like too and that we also enjoy and we're going with that and after this episode comes out i'm gonna listen to this and hear the first two again and i'll i know i'm gonna cringe <laughs> at the first two i don't think i want to hear those first five but i know we grew I had shared this with you. I'm not sure if I shared it on the podcast, but a few weeks ago, Spotify did this thing where they were showing like your year, 2019. They were showing the analytics of what you listened to, how many minutes you spent listening to music uh, year by year, you know, how much time you spent listening to music, listening to podcasts. And um, some people actually showed me their analytics and we were a top podcast for quite a few people. Woo! And that's, that's big. That's I I was really flattered and like just flabbergasted. I was just speechless and I didn't know what to say. But I was like, wow, people are listening and they enjoy it. That's that's really cool. And that's what keeps us going. Should have just treated them to some Starbucks, man. <laughs> yeah, right. I have a few of those. <laughs> like, I got to find them. <laughs> no, that's the mission now. Two years accumulated gift cards. But man... We haven't been doing this for a full year, but the process has been basically a year. Uh, we've been doing this since, what, August or September. Mm -hmm. The turn of this year and the turn of this decade, I feel good going forward. 2020, man. It sounds like it's just crazy how how a decade's just gone like that. But mm -hmm. I, at least I'm just going to add one more thing before we log off. Um, at least from what I've noticed yeah. is our kind of our chemistry going along when it comes to talking. Because, I, like you mentioned before, we would cuss and just say some random shit and say dumb shit too. But um, at least over the time, from I've noticed that we could kind of understand our our cues because before we would interrupt. I interrupt you a lot too, 
but and then we also do it with each other but before it was so much more disorganized i remember we didn't even know when we should stop when the person will go next and all this stuff but it's been really cool it it's kind of developed our way of understanding each other at least when it comes to talking on the mic and being able to make these episodes rather than just speak freely like we usually do and it's been a good development i I really enjoyed this (laughs) al i want you to share how many times when i edit a podcast do i text you hey you gotta stop saying this you gotta stop doing this al you keep doing this stop hitting your fucking mic (laughs) <laughs> oh my god this guy we, and, we, we, and you know what the thing is i don't even hit it he just listens he just hears it in his head yes you do <laughs> i don't know we're growing we're growing and we've had some fun episodes um some mess ups too you know, all technical difficulties oh those have been great and we we had we had some highlights too we had uh the reappearance of papa bear a few times we had a very popular episode with beatrice going to try to get them back uh eventually hopefully <laughs> but we've had our downs and we had our highs and we're growing and i think there's going to be a point where we have just good quality stuff cuz at times we're like oh the quality's not all that great in this one but no nah, we're we're getting better the content's getting better <laughs> just little by little we're understanding what to do and i got a nickname I'm still waiting for a photoshopped image of me on a stallion, people. I am waiting for that. Uh, I heard the intern's working on it. Yeah, he told me that too. I'm scared of that. Because he just fucks around with me. He's in, oh my. I'm looking forward I, to it. Whatever he sends me, I'm not even I'm not even gonna open it. Oh my god, just you wait, man. Just you wait. But yeah, dude, this this year and just this take it overall has been crazy, full of fun, learning a lot of stuff. But just enjoy what experience. Yeah, it's been a good couple of weeks, couple of months working this with you. And I'm excited for what we have planned. Because boy, do we have some plans. All you have is just, just wait and see. Anything else you yeah, want to add? Yeah, but with that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, what do I have to say? Just thank you, everybody. Um, this wasn't easy. But the fact that people enjoyed it, people actually liked it, made me want to do this. And it made me want to put in the extra time what about you l well you covered that part (laughs) but (laughs) i also want to add that and we also talked about this but just taking action man it we we just said we just said Uh um let's do it amen hallelujah all this stuff wouldn't be happening and what you previously said we wouldn't be even you guys wouldn't even know about us if it weren't for at least not us doing it precisely, but just the action of doing something. And you guys could do something great like yeah. this as well, or even better. We we honestly won't even be jealous or anything like that. It's just great to take action rather than just sit on your chair and not and just think about it. And that's it. Yeah. For those listening, when I mentioned in the end of each episode, when I mentioned Anchor and how Al and I didn't know shit about podcasts when we started, that's true. We didn't know a thing. We just... Knew we wanted to talk. <laughs> we learned stuff along the way, but that's just to show like anyone can do this. Uh, if you guys want to do YouTube or do movies or do a podcast, like you added us two who had no knowledge of this and we just started doing it and now we enjoy it. Now we feel like we're semi decent, semi professional, and we're only going to get better. I don't think we can get worse. That's the good part. You just can't. I just can't wait, man. We just can't wait what's coming in store. Without being said, yeah. man, this has been Savages and Scripted for 2019. It's your boy, Al slash Papi Chulo, with my co-host, Hector the Stallion. 21 episodes, everybody. Have a great new year. Don't get too messed up. Use your Ubers if you need to. Get messed up. Experience <laughs> things. Learn stuff. <laughs> All right. Good night. Goodbye. You can learn next week.